This delicate jungle cactus is known as Ripsalis burchellii, and I particularly love this one because it's a lot more dainty than some of my other jungle cactus, which tend to have these really thick stems, sometimes winged stems. But this one, along with a, a couple others that I have, are just really thin, and when they get a little bit large, they start to really hang down and they look like a big head of hair. But um, this one is, in particular is native to Southeast Brazil, where a lot of these are from in the jungle. And they're accustomed to living in a more epiphytic environment. So that means like on trees, underneath the forest canopy. So I have this growing in a little bit of a less barkier mix than typical. And it's because these like to hold on to a little bit more water. They don't have this kind of like thickness or succulency into the stems that sometimes allows some other ripsalis to kind of dry out. So I'm just a little bit more mindful with these daintier guys. Now, as far as light goes, they don't like a tremendous amount of light. They are very sensitive to too much intense light. So I have this growing underneath my green wall, which is, I would say, about six feet away from my southwest facing window. So when the light comes in in the afternoon, it kind of stretches into the room and it gets a little bit more of that late afternoon light, which is actually quite gentle when it's further into the room. Kind of like the golden hour, if you know what that means, like when you're, when you're thinking about photography or sunsets or anything along those lines. Now, as far as fertilizing though goes, these are very light feeders. So I would say maybe a 247 or a 347 on a quarterly, sometimes even annually ba annual basis is going to be totally fine for these guys. And as far as watering goes, I'm watering this pretty much about once a week and letting the water fully drain out. But like I said, I have this in a less of a barkier, less of a perlite mix. So it maintains a little bit of that water a little bit more but I tend to like to grow my Ripsalis in terracotta pots because it is porous and it will pull out some of the excess water so that these roots are not actually sticking in that water because there will be a little bit more root rot. As far as propagation goes, you can maybe see, it's because it's really delicate, but you could see on this plant right here, just a little bit of a root coming out there. You could see where my finger is pointing and you could actually clip that or the plant will actually clip itself sometimes and just fall into the soil and that's how it actually repropagates, which is super cool because sometimes it's happening right under your nose when you don't even see it.